So right now about 60% of electricity in the United States is turned on and off over the course of the day uh, as a result of a market auction. So going back to the, the mid 90s, that was zero. Uh, so we've gone from a system where you've had um, either a vertically integrated utility or some sort of government agency deciding which of their power plants they're going to turn on and off over the course of the day to having those decisions be made by markets. Answering the question requires a lot of data. You really need to be able to follow both supply and demand as close to real time as you can. And so hourly data is really important. So what I did in this video was calculate the average demand for every power control area in the country in 1999. And then I looked at what the realized demand for every hour was relative to their annual average. So make that for every power control area in the country for one hour, now make it for every hour of the year and animate that over time. These two things, if you think about what the total cost of generating electricity in the United States is, you can compose the, decompose those into two separate objects. One of them is the value of electricity being traded uh, across areas, and the other is the cost of generating out of merit, the out of merit costs. So when they describe out of merit costs, the out of merit cost is when you fire up a generating unit that's not one of the cheapest units that could be used to meet this level of demand. The design for this study is, first of all, after constructing all of this data and measuring what the out-of-merit costs and the gains from trade are at any moment in time, looking at how those outcomes change as you turn the market on and using the fact that it was rolled out in this staggered manner to compare areas that had no change in regulation at all to the change in outcomes in these areas that adopted markets. So over um, the 60% of the country that's now using markets to determine operations, they save about $3 billion a year relative to operating as they had in the past. So this figure shows that in advance of the introduction of markets, which are the, the negative months on the left-hand side, uh, how well the machine learning algorithm was predicting uh, the realized outcomes and there wasn't really any trend in sort of the difference between what the outcomes actually were and what the machine learning algorithm was predicting. Once the markets are introduced on the right hand side you see that there's a, a distinct break in how well prior operations are predicting the operations that we observe. That the, the markets uh, start allocating output to plants differently and the gains from trade as a result of these allocations increase. So this chart tracks what happens to out-of-merit costs leading up to the introduction of market dispatch and sort of what happens to those outcomes after the markets are introduced. And so you see there's a, a relatively flat period before the markets start of out-of-merit costs in these areas. And once the markets kick in, those costs drop um, here almost instantly. And there's some noise to it, but they bounce around at a uh, a level that's statistically lower. So from a policy perspective, we're either going to do one or the other. We're either going to, as in some areas continue to, uh, use the old regulated structure for determining who operates, or you use a market, or you think about how they should be better regulated or less regulated, one or the other. Um, that's a decision that has to be made. There are some areas now considering whether they should adopt markets, and there are some who would also like to go back uh, from them as well. I think more than anything else, it hopes to reframe the question about markets versus regulation. That we've historically asked, you know, should we use markets or, or regulation and which is better? And there isn't a universal answer to that question. Uh, it's not that one is perfect and the other is terrible. It's that they both have their own flaws and their own sort of settings. And ultimately for deciding policy, you want to figure out which one has the fewest flaws. Um, so I think more than anything, 
comparing uh, the relative flaws of these systems is, is a more productive way to evaluate uh, how we should determine the structure of an industry.